we go. Okay, so uh, I'd like to call the Post Office County Council meeting for Tuesday, June 9th, 2020. Uh, Ms. Reed will lead us in the first meeting. I'd like to lead to the flag of the United States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, so um, public comment. We are probably going to have any. We do have a telephone. Um, let's see. Let's see. Uh, community reports. Mr. Andrews. Is that enough? Mr. Carp. I have none. Mr. Kevin. I have none. Ms. Reed. I have none. Ms. Bonner. Uh, the Building and Code Committee will be meeting most likely next Thursday morning with. The Sustainability Committee, um, as you all know, has uh, reviewed uh, where we are with the LED street lights. Um, we should later this week have um, some success in sharing with you a, a final budget. Um, we are looking at um, limiting our sensors to parking sensors only, no air control sensors, no water sensors, um, so we don't extend the budget any further. Uh, and then we're going to add in the lights that we talked about at our, at our meeting that um, are minimal. But uh, so we should be able to have that final budget for you all to look at and approve at the next common council meeting is our hope. Um, and you certainly have time. You can ask us any questions you want, but should be very few changes, no substantial changes, very few changes from what we reviewed last week. Um, and the final... Uh, uh, thing that I wanted to say about that is I know the mayor, we got you the national grid letter, so, so that's the only other step we need to do to move forward with our with our um, LED street lights, city streets. I have a question for you. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah, uh, let's say I, the one light I had, she zoomed in on it, there's a tree that's really engulfed it. Mm -hmm. is, is that our, will they cut that back or is that something our DPW has to do? Wait to, so that the light can actually be seen. It's kind of or wrong with the is it, Are you talking on the street? Yeah. Yeah, no, that would be our... Our DPW, okay. All right. I would assume they have to cut it back just to work. A lot of times the utility might cut it back um, yeah. when they're maintaining it, but in this case it would be cut off the street light. So I'm sure that maintenance is going to okay. is, is be reduced. Right, um, and then one final thing is we um, submitted, uh, today's Tuesday, uh, yesterday we submitted a, a grant that um, uh, was called the SMART uh, smart city uh, grant pilot project for um, applications we, we have on the subcommittee in addition to our sustainability committee we have um, Jim Siblon, James, sorry, um, James Cunningham and, um, and obviously Jeff Flagg uh, working together with us and we use uh, Syracuse University's Tech Garden. They are uh, an incubator um, a company that specializes in technology innovation, and uh, so they're the ones that are referred to in that. Um, so the first step of this is just to look at um, vertical farming, a, a small um, project that could be grown or reduced in size, depending on for any community, could be a model, a pilot for a community that's looking to grow. Um, grow produce or grow vegetables of any kind uh, uh, year round. And so uh, the grant went in and if we if we get a positive review of that grant then we'll have further information for the city council. But I wanted you to know that the, uh, the mayor had shared that grant with us and um, we feel it's even a better idea and sort of the other people that we're working with like Tech Garden because it seems to fit in with the there's going to be in our communities as we recover from the COVID um, crisis, uh, buildings, maybe businesses, buildings that are empty that, that the community could use um, and help their farmers to grow produce year round and other things. So it's utilizing technology and vertical growth um, uh, uh, pilot project. So that was submitted yesterday. Thank you. Thank you. 
under a voice vote. We have a resolution for the amendments and we have a county meeting and as well as county council. Number two is a resolution for the May 2020 report of city clerk parking violations. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Members, we'll call the vote of our new resolutions. We'd like to vote for discussion. Uh, Mayor, I can accuse myself on number nine. Okay. So I will also, as long as we're at let me address number nine too. Um, on the map for uh, the downtown social, it says 12 foot, but it's going to be 10 foot width, just so you know. Number three is a resolution authorizing control to increase general fund revenue on A00 2630 restitution by $300 increased general fund expense on A23126 44798 seized assets for the state GFTD by $300. Number four is a resolution authorizing the code control to increase general fund revenue on A00. 9999-2680A insurance recovery by $46,573 in Chris Jones on expense on A23120-4479 other contracted service by $46,573. Five is resolution ordering the RFP City of Lawrence Falls 20-05 professional engineering services for a gravity collection sewer system infiltration and inflow study to our case in New York incorporated in amount not to exceed $100,000 and further authorize the mayor to enter into a contract with our case in the form of two by the city attorney. Six is a resolution approving the grant award by the case file 2018-1-012 in connection with the city of Gunsville's home ownership program, subject to home buyer's acceptance of final mortgage commitment issued by primary lender and acceptable to the city of Gunsville. Seven is a resolution for the community development manual payments of $18,073. Eight is a resolution approving the approach to the National River Line, replacing our 17 foot pipe on the sidewalk at 221 Street, contingent upon 10 conditions listed on the attacks. Nine is a resolution approving the approach to the for outside dining for the following restaurants, with the understanding that all applicants must strictly adhere to property promos. Phase two healthy safety requirements and outdoor tables must be placed six feet apart. All staff must wear face coverings. The customers must wear face coverings when not seated. They are for the Grateful Dead, Downtown City Tavern, Craft 9, Fresh ADK, Spectre Coffee Roasters, Hometown Cigar and Lounge, Mean Max Brew Brewers, Queensbury Hotel, Sam's Dine, Raul's Mexican Grill, Bullpen Tavern, and Downtown Social. Any and further revenues. Uh, resolving that outside dining updates must begin outside dining activities on Thursday, June 4, 2020, subject to retroactive. Common Council approving on uh, June 9, 2020, payment of applicable approach for permanent fees. Ten is a resolution approving the halfway door to order watershed recreation management plan as amended in a concert with the Town of Queensbury and Coach Falls Water and Sewer Commission. 11 is a resolution authorizing quick claim deeds in the matter of Charles Street and West versus Hodgkins as recommended by the city attorney. 12 is a resolution approving the warrant. So moved. Second. Roll we'll call vote. Ms. Reed? Yes. Mr. Gaffanel? Yes. Mr. Collins? Yes. Ms. Palmer? Yes. Mr. Andrew? Yes. Mr. Clark? Yes. Okay. Resolutions passed. Old business, Mr. Uh I just wanted to thank you, Mayor, for all the work you did over the, over the, uh, over the weekend downtown and protecting all the buildings and having a, showing everybody how we have a peaceful protest. I thought it was a great day for you know both sides of everything, you know, uh, and nonviolence. It was it was great. I saw you everywhere, and I really appreciate downtown businesses appreciate the work and the time you put in. And not only that, it was the, the tornado we were out all night. And the guys were working instantly. I had DPW was on my street in the rain, cutting up trees, and there was parked across the street. So I appreciate all the time you put in. I know it's been a rough couple of weeks. But thank, thank, you. You. thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. Mr. Clark? I have not. Okay. Mr. Camp, now. I would echo uh, Scott's. Uh, DPW and the mayor about the uh, rapid cleanup of our storm, and hopefully we won't get another one for a long time. That was pretty 
was scary, I'll tell you that. Yeah. I was glad I was over at Corona High Rise. I saw that thing come through and I, I wouldn't want to be in any house or by any tree. So I felt pretty safe. But it was, DPW did a hell of a job. I mean, you go down the next day, later in the day, it was done. Everything out the road, chopped up, beautiful. So I uh, thank Tom Gerard, Ms. Brew, and the mayor for your help. And keep staying out there. <laughs> That's all I have. Uh, you can't have that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, I'll agree about the tornado one Friday night. I also sent some addresses along, and uh, we were already talking to the constituents before I had a chance to follow up. And then on Saturday morning, when I was walking to the farmer's market, I saw Tom Gerard out. They already cleaned up some of the mess that was all over, so they did an excellent job. Um, I also think that the events that happened on Sunday were great for our city. The, our law enforcement and the protest organizers did a great job. They had masks and water bottles and sunblock. Pizza. Everybody Pizza. was peaceful. And it was a really, really nice event um, for our community. Great. Mr. Collins? Yeah, I, I just wanted to uh, thank you for all your work in there and the, to recognize the Lance Falls Police Department. Um, I had a, a friend of mine who was in, who's from Lake George with his son that attended the, the protests, and he um, remarked how. Um, great that the Lens Falls Police Department wasn't taking the protests um, personal, that it was an affront against them. And they felt welcome to come and, and say that um, the tragedy that's happened and that there's injustice and they're, they're glad that they had a place to go and, and yell a little bit and let off some steam that they're unhappy and they want civil change but not that they were a threat to our local law enforcement officers or in any way criticizing our local law enforcement officers. And he showed me a video or a photograph of they were having, it must have been, it seemed like um, somebody set up a basketball thing where you take a shot to show your support for uh, the gentleman who was killed and a Glens Falls police officer was there taking a shot with his mask on and, and, and so anyway, he just remarked how proud he was to be from Glens Falls and to see that kind of um, cooperation and understanding that, that we didn't have to feel that they were saying that they were against what Glens Falls was and that the community wasn't attacking them like he had seen and thought on TV. He felt a little differently. So anyway, congratulations to to the police and for you to prepare and help people to have a safe place to come and ask for change. Thank you. Thank you. I just would add one of the protest organizers like starting the protest said, we are not anti-police, we are anti-police brutality, to echo your point. Mm. And that was really the tone I was set. It's very good. New business, Mr. Chairman. I have done. Mr. Clark. I have done. I have none. Okay. So I don't think we have a time for this. All right. Um, well, I want to go over a few things real quick. And uh, one of them I, I appreciate uh, the athletes for the tornado and for um, the event we had on Friday. But the strength of what I think of the city council and the city government right now is our department heads. Um, we have excellent department heads. When we had the storm, um, our department head, which was uh, Tom Gerard, mm -hmm. and then his foreman's with Rich Elmer and Mark Lander went out. They were out right away. Um, they were very visible. They took care of situations that went around the city. And some streets were closed, and National Grid uh, was not there. The fire department did a great job with the trees and the wires down. We had, I don't know, five or six. Uh, Fire trucks and police cars out, making sure that the public was safe uh, from down the wire. So, um, you know, you can't do that. You know, a mayor can't do that by himself. It, it comes with the department heads, and they do an excellent job. And, and if you talk about the march, and we back up to the f Sunday before the march, uh, when it was kind of a uh, impromptu demonstration downtown, and uh, we had demonstrations and counter demonstrators and. 
Um, our assistant chief, uh, Joel Beauclair, was uh, in charge, and uh, what he did was phenomenal. We uh, saw you know, some social media posts. We saw that you know something might happen where we might get a large crowd downtown, which we ended up doing. Uh, but we were prepared. We had uh, Long County sheriffs. Um, we had all our people in who were able to come in. And so the point being is that the people that we have in these positions do their job. They're very well trained. They know what to do. They know where to get the resources that they need. So you know, I want to um, commend them because they do an excellent job. Makes my job and makes your guys' job a lot easier to be able to talk to Republicans and reassure them that um, we have good people that can get the job done. So that I think uh, was ob obvious over the last you know week or so we can have. Uh, the other thing too that I want to mention too is that we uh, just approved the. Uh, after work trail, which I think is going to be a pretty amazing thing, it's been going on for you know quite a few years now. Uh, we're trying to put it together, and uh, you know it's back and forth between both communities, and both administrations, and uh, our water and sewer board very protective of our property. Again, um, one of the most precious assets we have is our water, and uh, they uh, they really want to protect that and. Uh, so there was you know, some give and take over the years, and uh, we finally come up to uh, what I think is a good uh, result. And uh, uh, it's going to be exciting now that you know, we have uh, our trail that Mr. Bartlett is working on through Coles Woods, and we'll have the halfway brook. We obviously got the bike trail, we got the feeder canal. So there's a lot of things going on here that someday I think we'll all be connected um, throughout our community. And, you know, we're talking about green and so on, with people riding bikes. I think we're doing a great job along that, and I think this is a, a big step forward um, with that. Um, and that's about all I got, unless anybody else has anything. Mayor? Yeah. Um, Mr. Bartholomew had circulated an amended resolution um, for us to consider, um, and I think that time is of the essence so if we could get that through tonight that would probably be helpful. Yeah. On the, on, it was on um, lead agency status. We had passed one two weeks ago but it had it had blanks in it that needed to be filled in and this is the version with the information filled in. I'm glad you caught that Jim. And she told me. Yeah, he told me. He told and me this I, morning, I, I you know it's a long time ago. Okay. <laughs> But that's essentially we had to add a couple of involved agencies rather than amending that later. Uh, we would have then had to trigger another uh, three-day uh, waiting period. So by doing this now, we've corrected that. It's really one of the top paragraph. Or no, I got it. You, yeah. I think I, I, I got it. Okay, okay, go ahead. Okay. Resolution request to lead agency status under seeker for the South Street redevelopment project construction of the market at South Street with four with a public parking garage, repurposing of two adjoining buildings, and sale of city property for development of a mixed-use building. You want the rest of it? No, that's good. So moved. Second. Roll call vote. Ms. Reed? Yes. Mr. Campanel? Yes. Mr. Collins? Yes. Ms. Palmer? Yes. Mr. Endemiri? Yes. Mr. Clark? Yes. Okay. Resolution passes. Thank you. Okay. So I think that's it. Anybody else got anything? Okay, motion to adjourn. So moved. No. Second. No. Come on. Motion to adjourn.